let's go ahead and get to um, this interesting exchange between Joe Rogan and Jordan Peterson on uh, Ron DeSantis, who, of course, is seen as Trump's primary rival in terms of winning the nomination. Uh, as you guys probably know and followed in the news, DeSantis has banned the AP African American history course from being taught in Florida schools, obviously incredibly controversial move. And uh, Peterson brought it up and took issue with it. Let's take a listen to the argument that he makes. Once you get to the point where the government has to step in and regulate, say, what education systems are doing, you're already in deep trouble. And because it can't, I don't see how it can really be done because I, I can't define critical race theory. You know, I mean, more or less, you can get some sense of the cloud of ideas that's associated with it. But, but trying to draw the lines, how are you going to do that? And then, of course, you enable inevitably, no matter what your goal is to begin with, you're going to control a certain form, let's say, of pathological communication, misinformation. That's just going to play into the hands of people who like to censor, and that's just as likely on the right as it is on the left. Mm. So, no, it's a real dangerous game. And is a problem like the term critical race theory is it's open to interpretation. Yeah, well, it's often even hard, except in retrospect, to understand a lot of what these things actually are, you know, because new clouds of ideas emerge and they kind of have an animating spirit and they, ha they have a set of associated, what would you say, presumptions. And you can often only see what that is in retrospect. So, yeah, I was actually fascinated by that. Yeah, what did you make of that, Sagar? I don't know, because, you know, he's also endorsed Rod DeSantis. Actually, I remember... Who, Peterson has? Yeah, he did in November of 2022. Pete Jordan Peterson... Uh, I don't know if endorse is the right word. I think he was like, said something I would positive like to about see him. him. Uh, yeah, I was curious uh, just to see it because he also kind of brought it up unprompted. For those who haven't listened, mm -hmm. it was within the first five minutes. It was, it was right also out of the gate. in the discussion of, of a Twitter files episode. Mm -hmm. So I was like, huh, uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm curious actually what you think because you did that monologue on the Crowder, Ben Shapiro thing. And like, by the way, there's some fun stuff coming out about Steven Crowder. Uh, but uh, how exactly you said it was relating to the GOP primary. And I was like, well, maybe he's, you know, I mean, he said he was pro DeSantis. Maybe this is like a political move. I know that there's strife within the Daily Wire over being pro-Trump mm -hmm. or pro Ron DeSantis, but I was just fascinated to hear it. I was like, wow, a, I, I, that was just, I was actually, totally unexpected. That's actually a layer yeah. of it that I didn't even consider because yeah. I wasn't even thinking about the fact that Peterson is now with the Daily Wire. I mean, this yeah. is his employer. Right. Shapiro is very clearly team Ron DeSantis, has been right. for a while. I mean, he wasn't a, in a he was not an original Trump supporter. He was a Ted Cruz guy. And then, you know, during the Trump era, he was relatively supportive of Trump, although, you know, he would criticize him right. from time to time. But Walsh is very pro DeSantis. That's right. why I was like, oh, so maybe this I, is like a thing. I maybe this was like, an, you know, his attempt to carve out his own lane or, or put out a little bit right. of dissent to that move. The fundamental point that he makes here, I think, is a solid one, which is just basically like, listen, you can't run around being like, I'm the pro, pro free speech guy and then be banning books and banning entire courses. And the case that he makes here of like, you know, once you get into, okay, this is this sort of vague amorphous concept that people have trouble even defining, but you're saying you're banning it, well, that can bleed over into a lot of areas. I think seems like a reasonable case to make, especially to, to Rogan and a, a Rogan-aligned audience. The one thing I will say is, you know, I like the idea of, okay, we just want to teach the facts and we want education to be neutral and stay true to the, the history, whatever that history is, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. The reality is that's not really possible because, I mean, government is always going to have an influence on what is being taught. And so there is a real battle of ideas here. Now, I would say it's not the appropriate role of like the state executive to just top down decide this is what's okay and this is what's not. This is why you have local control of schools. And in theory, in best case scenario, you have a democratic local process where parents are involved and they're electing school board members. And that's how curriculum are being ultimately being developed. But I do want to just say that I think it's a little bit of a fantasy to imagine that schools are not going to be political whatsoever. Because the way you teach things, the type of courses that are included, those are always going to be somewhat yeah. political decisions. I actually, I completely agree with you, and that's why it's very difficult, uh, because I also believe in free speech. And, you know, for example, this AP history exam, we're talking about the reparations. This is included in the curriculum. Movement for Black Lives, Black Queer Studies, Post-Racial Racism and Colorblindness, Intersectionality and Activism. I'm sorry, I mean, I'd be furious if that was taught to my child in a state environment. And I'll give people the flip side. So I grew up in Texas, I grew up in College Station, Texas. Yeah. I remember this vividly. My science teacher was required to teach us evolution. And somebody asked her a question and they were like, hey, 
Uh, I'm not going to call her out, although I still probably think I should. One of my <laughs> students students was like, uh, what do you believe? And she was like, well, I believe what my church, something like that, her church teaches me. And I was like, I'm sorry. It's like, you just cast out as an authority figure on evolution and you're a freaking science teacher. And I was sitting there as a non-Christian being like, am I losing my mind? And she starts talking about, you know, whatever they taught in the Bible or what, and I, look, that's fine. You wanna do that at Sunday school? Be my guest, even though I think you're absolutely out of your mind. But this lady's an authority figure. And I remember thinking in that moment, I'm like, oh, wow. I'm like, you know, somebody really should like have a say over this, you know? Mm -hmm. And obviously I didn't, cause I was in the cultural minority, but the point that you're making is correct. We are gonna have to fight about this in a state school. Private school, you can teach whatever you want. If but you wanna again, be at home, you wanna teach this to your kids, I mean, frankly, I think you're crazy, but you be my guest, well, you know, it's your, it's your right as an American citizen. The, the blanket yeah. banning of teaching black history, though, from a top-down executive, I think strikes most people, including Jordan Peterson, who tends to be a very conservative guy, as going way too far. I mean, the things you're talking about, to be taught about, okay, what is the argument for and against reparations in a high school, elected course, this isn't even something, you know, you get to yeah, decide whether you're gonna take this course or not. I don't think that's inappropriate whatsoever. So in any case, I do think that, you know, it is it is a difficult balance for Ron DeSantis to strike where he's again trying to paint himself as like, oh, I'm against the woke mob and I'm against cancellation and I'm pro free speech and that's my whole thing. But at the same time, you're banning more books than any other state in the country. Florida and Texas are the two top states in the country in terms of banning books, back to your Texas mm -hmm. example. And you're wholesale just saying, no, we're not gonna teach AP black history. Not like, oh, hey, maybe we should make some tweets. No, we're just gonna ban it. Well, I think at they did every, request to change at, the AP curriculum. At every school statewide, I think that strikes people as going way too far and does smack of, you just don't wanna teach the ugly parts of American history that you know look bad for the state. You want the warm and fuzzy version that doesn't include like the ugliness of slavery and the Jim Crow South and all of those things. So um, in any case, I thought it was interesting that Peterson jumped on that particular issue and clearly wanted to bring it up in the podcast right away. Yeah, I was, I see that's where, look, we don't have to litigate it, but like, I'm like, I don't think that post-racial racism, colorblindness and black queer studies is a goddamn thing to do with the American Civil War. I mean, I would love to for more people to actually have an accurate understanding But isn't this part of, I mean, if you're talking about an AP yeah. black history course, Shouldn't those struggles and those movements, like, why shouldn't they be covered? Well, who decides? Why shouldn't that? you talk like, about? Are we talking about Harvard University's color department, you know, in terms of like how we understand colorblindness and intersectionality? Or are we talking about actual black people in Florida and well, like, what they want? A, I like, think that's a good you know? question yeah. because you're saying it should yeah. be up to Ron DeSantis and however he feels no, 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 about no. black I don't history. Think it should be I don't agree with that at all. I'm saying I'm looking at the curriculum being like, yeah, I think this is a problem. Uh, that said, I have honestly no idea how to deal with it. I mean, I just gave my example. Here's the truth. The vast majority of the people in that class probably did not believe in evolution. And probably the principal who ran the school also didn't believe in evolution, but they were required to teach it for a state standard. And at the same time, they're casting doubt on it. Well, I mean, is it my fault for living in the state? I don't know. You know, it's like it, one of those it where is, it's tough. I do want to, I, yeah. listen, I, in my opinion yeah. on this particular issue of banning an entire like black history course from an entire state, I think that is clear cut over the line way too far. But I do think that overall the conversation of like what gets included in an education curriculum is actually very complex because on the one hand, as I just said before, you have this principle of local control, electing school board members, an ideal situation, parents having a lot of yeah. input. On the other hand, right, you can think, if you think back into to like the Jim Crow South and you have a majority of the white citizens who think black people are inferior. Mm -hmm. Does, is that, yeah, should that be? No, of course that shouldn't yeah, be like taught to students. No, it shouldn't right? just be, we have basic rights that should be included in the curriculum. So it's just like with all of our laws and institutions, it's not enough to just say majority rule. You also have to make sure that there is, you know, equality and basic rights that we recognize in the constitution that are reflected in that curriculum as well. So it's also not just as simple as saying like, whatever the local community decides, like if the local community is like, we don't like evolution, mm -hmm. I would personally say- I'd be like, well. No, I'm not down. No, I, I would personally say like, this is the facts, this is yeah. the science, kids need to be taught this in a public institution. Well, that kind of happened already, right? Yes. So that, that's already, here's another fun one. Kids in the South, if you start hearing the war between the states, 
you need to start reading for yourself. Listen, uh, that's a little bit of a flag uh, for all having, of you. Having yeah. grown up in a rural part yeah. of Virginia, there were a lot of highly questionable parts of the <laughs> curriculum, field trips that I went on, et cetera, that, you know, we'll just, we'll just leave it there. Hey guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now, and Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just wanna give you the best independent coverage of this election which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us. And if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only for you.